Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at the basic startup procedure for the Cessna 152. Now this is the non-Aerobat version, but if you do have the Aerobat version, it's going to behave exactly the same way. Now in the real world, the startup and setup and pre-flight process is quite that, a process. It is uh, something that we don't have to worry about too, too much in this particular situation because things are just kind of simplified just a little bit for us to kind of make it a little bit easier. So what is the basic startup procedure for an aircraft that is propeller driven? Well, basically you turn on the fuel and crank crank this starter, but uh, sometimes it's a little more difficult than it sounds depending on the overall setup of your given aircraft, which is why we're going to keep it nice and simple. First things first, if you do have the checklist and you're willing to go through it, this is an awesome way to actually zip through the different steps of a startup. In the real world, it takes about half an hour to inspect the exterior of the plane. I'm not going to worry about any of that today. Instead, we're just going to follow through the checklist and see how quick and easy it can be. So I'm going to go ahead and see there, and you've got this neat little handle here. You want to go ahead and make sure you slam it to the on position. So it's going to be left so that it's on. As soon as you're done with that, you just tick the item. Next, what you want to do is you want to set the brakes. So to do that, I keep things a little bit simpler than that. I'm just going to go ahead and look, but now go ahead and remove the yoke and the little brake lever. So you can see the parking brake is already pulled on. I am good to go in that regard. So I'll go ahead and throw the yoke back. So you can go ahead and see that. I'm going to tick that item because it's all set. And that's it. That's all we had to worry about. Keep in mind there are other things we normally do in the real world, shut off radios. But again, it's your flight simulator. You paid the money for it. You play it the way that you want to play with it. I'm just trying to keep things simple here. Maybe another day we'll take a look at the full procedure, but don't worry about it too much. If it works the way you want it to, it shouldn't matter. All right, starting engine. Mixture rich. So the mixture is this big fat red handle that you have sitting between your laps. This controls the air fuel ratio inside of your carburetor. Uh, with this all the way pulled out, no fuel gets to the carburetor. With it all the way pushed in, like I've just done now, it allows you to have a full fuel based on the current air. Now this is a funny little instrument and it requires a lot of extra explanation, but the key thing is if it's not pushed in, nothing's going to happen. Let's go ahead and tick that carburetor heat. Carburetor heat. Ugh, yuck. Carburetor heat. Our carburetor can get ice inside of it if we are at low engine powers. The carburetor heat is a spectacular way to prevent that from happening. Surprise, it also bypasses your air filter, so it's very, very dangerous. This is going to be one of those buttons you probably want to bind if you spend a lot of time flying this particular aircraft, because it will save you frustration. You don't want to get ice in your carburetor. By the way, nice warm summer days is when you're going to get ice. Let's go ahead and say that's ticked. Now we need to prime as required. Okay. Here is our fuel primer. What's a primer do? Basically what the primer is going to do is force fuel into the cylinders. It tries to atomize it so you have a little pop when we're trying to get everything started. It's a very, very simple tool to use. Basically, you're going to pull it out. Oh, oh, look at that. When you pull it out, you're basically sucking fuel into it. And when you push it in, you're basically forcing the fuel in. You really don't need to crank this thing more than three times on a normal day. And to be honest, if you've used the engine recently, you probably don't even need to prime it at all. If it's a cold day, expect to use anywhere between five pumps, maybe six, maybe seven. Again, you barely even need to use this. So now we've got some fuel in the cylinders, our mixture's set. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our next step. I'm gonna go take the item, which is our throttle. This is really important with an old school carbureted engine. You want to actually push your throttle in a teeny tiny bit. It says a half of an inch. So you have to basically judge visually that's about a half an inch. I've got it set to about 25%. I think that's even a little high. I'm going to back it down to about 20. In the real world, you have your hand on the throttle when you're doing this to kind of play with it once it does catch. I'm going to tick this item. All right, master switch is this big red one right here. In the real world, before you turn on the master switch, generally you're going to turn on the bacon light, which is this one right here. It says beacon. It's the bacon light. I'm sorry. Master switch on. Now, if you listen really carefully, you'd actually hear all of your gyros go. That means it's working correctly. And then we crank the ignition. Normally, before we do this in the real world, we'll come over here to the window. We'll slam open the window and yell the word clear. And then we'll make sure none of these nice employees are anywhere near this aircraft when we actually go ahead and close the contacts. So I'm just going to assume, for example, that I've yelled the word clear and everything's going. Let's go ahead and crank it. You're just going to put it to the start position and hold until it catches. You'll know it when it catches. So I'm going to look to my right a little bit. Watch the RPM. That's it. And we're started. As soon as the engine does start, you're going to want to go ahead and stabilize the RPM for a thousand or less. To do this, you're just going to sit here and fits with the throttle just a teeny tiny bit. On nice cold days, expect to see that RPM spike on you because of that nice dense air. Got my engine. Uh, it's probably going to be right around uh, 13, 12 percent. Looks pretty good. All right. Thousand RPM. Uh, we have our flashing light is already turned on. 
Um, we're going to double check to make sure our oil pressure is good. This is really, 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 really important. In the real plane, you can see we have oil pressure. Honestly, on cold days, this might not even show for a little while. It's pretty terrifying. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Our flashing beacon was already set. Navigation lights are not on because they are not needed because it is not nighttime. Don't worry about it too, too much. Oil pressure is good. Flashing beacon, we did that already. Turn that one on, and that's it. So then we just go ahead and worry about our before takeoff checklist. And again, this is something we need to worry about a little later on. Again, we'll take a look at our normal takeoff a little bit later on. And that's it. That's all you have to do to go ahead and get these kind of aircraft started. Now, I've just taken a, look, a quick look around. I can see everybody's in pretty good shape. Keep in mind, all my radios were on. In the real world, you wouldn't do that because it's tremendously dangerous. Notice the aircraft has got a nice little brumble brumble to it as it kind of shakes a little bit. Completely realistic. It's not, usually, you can tap the throttle and your joysticks or your controls will actually poke you in the gut real quickly. One thing worth noting, too, is in the real world, your fuel gauge only has to be accurate when you're on the ground and it only has to be accurate when you're at zero fuel so <laughs> don't always rely on that but again it's a good indication that you set everything else right and that's about it for starting your aircraft again super basic we just follow what was built in you can do an auto start by pressing Control e if you need to the key thing is this aircraft is now running we did all the work to get it started so that makes us feel really really good enjoy <gasps> i did not close that did i